Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue à cette quatrième session. C'est la première d'aujourd'hui. Et nous commençons aujourd'hui avec un sujet extrêmement important. Il s'agit de la révolution de Jasmin. Cinq ans après son événement, nous venons de célébrer son cinquième anniversaire il y a une semaine. Ça a été un... un We have an incredible amount of important content to get through in quite a short amount of time. So I'm going to, um, by way of brief introduction, um, just mention I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague here on the panel, Widad Bushamui, the President of the Tunisian Indus Union for Industry, Commerce and Handicraft, one of four organisations that were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2015 for their work in bringing together a multi-stakeholder collaboration to push forward and promote progressive policies and, and, and democratization in Tunisia. Obviously, Tunisia is a, a very current subject right now, and there are news events are unfolding by the day. At the moment, I want to just first off, off ask Ms. Bashamui if you could perhaps reflect on the past five years before we get to the present, and, and maybe give us an idea of what worked and what succeeded in Tunisia, and, and what are the best practices that the region can learn from. Merci. I'm sorry, I'm going to speak in French because I feel uh, better, but... Uh, I would like, first of all, to thank the web for this invitation. And I would like to talk to you about Tunisia and our experience in Tunisia. I would also like to say, to begin, uh, to talk about the changes which have taken place in the region and which have affected the whole region and Tunisia as well. You know what happened in the Arab world. You know that uh, uh, Tunisia uh, was the first country uh, in the Arab Spring uh, to uh, see these uprisings. What we saw was extraordinary, but what is happening today has become very difficult for us. What happened in that region, of course, is due to the fact that the people peoples of the Arab world uh, were totally dissatisfied, be it on the uh, democracy front or uh, because of economic or social uh, reasons. We had this Arab Spring in Tunisia because the youth were despaired. They were the origin of this Arab Spring. But we mustn't forget what happened what happened in Tunisia is an exception because what is happening in the Arab region today leads us to think that there's a lot that remains to be done. And unfortunately, terrorism has uh, risen. We see that uh, uh, cultures have changed. Uh, people are talking in the name of Islam to convey messages which have nothing to do with our Islam. Our Islam is uh, a religion of tolerance, of respect of others, and we see also the masses of uh, migrants moving away from this region and their despair and uh, the hundreds of people who have died as they were crossing mountains in icy conditions to find shelter, security, and jobs. All these conflicts have an impact on the region and on Tunisia as well, of course. I don't want to dwell too much on the region, in particular with Mr. Amr Moussa, who is uh, in the hall. He knows uh, the region better than me. What we did in Tunisia is exceptional because this was based on consensus and dialogue. This is what we have managed to achieve. It was exceptional. We've succeeded because the Tunisians are educated. We must say this. We have uh, uh, youth who are open. They are uh, always seeking information. We have a strong, emancipated civil society. And let us not forget uh, uh, Tunisian women who are emancipated, which uh, meant that Tunisia was uh, able to find a consensus and to find a solution. The four organizations the uh, the employers, the uh, labor unions, the Human Rights League, and the Order of Lawyers are the four 
civil society organization that have managed to come together, especially uh, the coexistence between uh, the employers and uh, the workers' union. We did it. We managed to come together because we felt that dialogue was essential. And I think we have managed to um, face this challenge. And this relationship between us has uh, facilitated uh, dialogue uh, and uh, contacts. And we must not forget that people had um, were trusting us. They trusted us. They helped us. And we succeeded in achieving this dialogue thanks to the social uh, to the civil society in uh, Tunisia and because uh, the political parties uh, um, have also joined our ranks. And without them, we would not have succeeded in this stage of the national dialogue. So we've managed to bring together the uh, political parties around the same table to talk about the future of Tunisia and what we must do in order to succeed in this transitional period. This was not easy by any means uh, because there were some political parties which could not imagine ever sitting at the same table. But we succeeded, so we managed to face and to succeed in this challenge. But I would like to say that civil society was with us. There were sit-ins. There were people who, for several weeks, uh, were demonstrating at the Bardo for a constitution, a modern constitution, and we have obtained a democratic modern constitution. And what we've done for all these years was to uh, succeed in establishing a democratic process. But we have something that is very important, uh, and today we need to work on this. It is the economy because people were demonstrating in the streets uh, between December 2010 until January 2011. They were asking for dignity and jobs and, of course, democracy. Democracy we've got with this uh, freedom of the press, uh, freedom of the media, and dignity. We can only have it if we create jobs, uh, and we have to uh, then create job opportunities. This is a very important uh, challenge. So we've managed with the democratic uh, uh, process, but we have to ensure that this democratic transition is going to succeed. And I think uh, 2016 will be the year of economic renewal with the reforms and the changes that are needed in order to satisfy the demands of the youth. But we have to listen to them. And I would add that this uh, uh, economic uh, revival will not succeed if there's no dialogue or consensus, because we cannot impose reforms on people. Tunisians have uh, become accustomed to uh, talking, to reaching uh, agreement. And I think that in order to succeed in our economic revival, we have uh, to do it together. We have to convince people. We have to try and explain to people that the only way out is to create jobs uh, and uh, to have the uh, favorable climate for uh, jobs. Uh, we have to have security, stability, and uh, a, a calm social uh, uh, environment. We have to improve productivity and uh, job uh, uh, conditions and working conditions. And we must add that there is a lot, to, uh, uh, a lot of things going for Tunisia. We are close to uh, Africa. We're close to Europe. Uh, we have the know-how. Uh, the um, Tunisian uh, companies have know-how. We have many foreign companies uh, in uh, 3,300 foreign companies in Tunisia, and they've remained in Tunisia because they trust Tun Tunisia. And these are very good advantages. But of course, we have to rely upon ourselves first and foremost. But we must also uh, ask for the international community to help us because it will not be possible for us to succeed alone without uh, the international committee. I would like to uh, greet here the president of the Tunisian government, Mr. Habib Essid. Uh, good morning, sir. So 
I am here to listen to you and to your questions and to answer your questions. So this is uh, the background of what happened in Tunisia. Uh, I can't uh, uh, sum up uh, uh, in five to ten minutes what happened over five years, but be uh, sure that uh, Tunisians are, are trusting in their country. We are trusting in our country. We are. Uh, we have full confidence in the future. We can succeed. What we've done is exceptional, but uh, we must uh, be well uh, uh, surrounded. We must be uh, heard. And uh, if I could talk about uh, the political scene, the international community should find a solution to what's happening in Libya because uh, the situation in Libya is having a huge impact on us, and we are uh, uh, plagued by the instability in Libya. And uh, there is a, a huge uh, number of weapons in Libya and uh, a huge number of terrorists in Libya. So we are asking the international community to find a peaceful solution to the problem in Libya. It is uh, a neighboring country. We have uh, relations with Libya. And even uh, on the economic uh, or on the human uh, uh, level, I think uh, we have found ourselves uh, uh, alone to manage the situation in Libya. And without a peaceful solution, we shall suffer even more. Welcome, Mr. Prime Minister. I should say Mohamed Fadel Mahfoud, the president of the Tunisian Order of Lawyers, um, was uh, due to join us on this panel in, and uh, regrettably hasn't been able to make it yet, but we do hope um, although he's running late, he will be able to join us for the second half of this session. Now, traditionally, we have uh, a pause for questions from the floor. This session is about the lessons learned and, and, the, um, and the success in building a multi-stakeholder uh, coalition um, and, and, and forging cooperation from, 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 from parties to create a successful transition. Do we have any questions? We have the gentleman there. Anybody else? We'll do, it. We'll do one or two. Okay, so would you, could you main, would you mind giving us your name and where you're from? Yes, my name is Nicolas Barré. I'm the um, uh, editor in chief of Les Echos, the French newspaper. Mais je vais poser ma question en français, si vous permettez. Shall put my question in French, if you will allow me. Two things. To first of all, we uh, congratulate you on what you're doing. But I would like to have your insight on what's happening, uh, uh, what has been happening in Kasrin in Tunisia. Do you think it's serious? Uh, what uh, What do you think of that? And you've talked about reforms. What do you think are the more most important reforms that should be uh, launched in Tunisia? Okay. Thank you. This Nobel Prize is the Nobel Prize uh, uh, awarded to all the Arab community. It is something uh, extraordinary. Civil society has uh, obtained this uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, to talk about Kasrin, it's a region uh, in the hinterland. It is a region that has not really uh, taken advantage of what has happened over the last few years. The youth there are still waiting. Uh, uh, the revolution in Tunisia was uh, the origin of it was the fact that the youth were fed up. They were waiting for investments. They were waiting for jobs and uh, for a normal life. As I was saying earlier, 2015 uh, saw the success of uh, economic transition. 2016 should see the uh, uh, tran economic transition. And for the youth in Kasrin, they need solutions, uh, mid-term and long-term solutions. Because, you know, there's a security issue there. Uh, there's the mountain nearby where a lot of terrorism uh, took place. Uh, people are suffering, and they, they probably are suffering because of this image. Uh, contrary to what is being said, people of Kasrin are people who love life. Uh, they are educated, but unfortunately, all this, uh, these uh, terrorist acts uh, uh, took place there, but they weren't uh, responsible for that. The only solution for them today is uh, to listen to 
them, to their grievances, to convince them, and to find a solution so that they get jobs. The state cannot do this alone. Today, there are too many people employed in the public sector. We need to encourage uh, um, uh, corporations and the private uh, sector and private initiative. This was not included in the Constitution, but we must today rely on uh, the private sector while making it possible uh, for them to act. We must make it easy to have access to credit. We have to find uh, uh, good policies. And as a private sector, as uh, uh, corporations, we must uh, uh, be more active in these regions. We must invest in these regions, even if there is a risk that uh, it's, these projects are not going to be profitable uh, in the short term. We must do something in the region of Kasrin. As for the reforms, you know, this government is uh, launching reforms uh, on the, uh, for example, the investment code, uh, the fiscal reform, and uh, what we are the first uh, employer in the country as a private sector. What we need are simple and efficient reforms. And we have to take into account what is happening in the region on the uh, competition uh, level. We're not the only ones. Uh, uh, investors go where there is stability, where there is security, and uh, especially where Therefore, we need simple reforms that will encourage investment. And we hope that in the next few uh, weeks, we will be talking about the investment code. We've got the uh, banking reform that is already uh, set up. So all this is very important, but Tunisians are still expecting more efficiency. They're expecting a plan of action. They would like to see that investments are taking place. So it is up to us, private sector. It is also up to the state to make this uh, possible. OK, I'd like to just lead off with um, one that we've collected from social media, and that is how active the National Dialogue Quartet is today. You are obviously very effective in, 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 in helping secure the democratic transition, but what, are, are you still an active force? What do you, and if so, what are your priorities? We were there for a certain duration, a certain period of time. Uh, when there was uh, this uncertainty in Tunisia, we worked together. Today, we have institutions that have been elected, institutions that were elected democratically. We respect these institutions, uh, so it's up to these institutions to do their work. We are still around. We have uh, a duty economically and socially to work together and to work each in our field of action. The democratic transition has been a success, but there's economic renewal is now the priority in 2016. Is there a call for similar multi-stakeholder collaboration, perhaps rejuvenating the partnership to help, help work alongside the institutions to create economic growth that is so badly needed? Of course, uh, with the uh, labor union, uh, our fate is to work together without uh, social stability. We will never be able to invest. Uh, so of course, today we have signed uh, together the, uh, on the 14th of January 2013 in the assembly, the social pact. Uh, it has to be set up. It has to become uh, 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 enforce. Uh, the reforms cannot succeed if the labor unions uh, don't approve this. So we have to be together to succeed in this economic transition. What is the greatest challenge um, for Tunisia? Is it instability from outside the region today, or is it the economy and finding jobs for the youth inside the country? <coughs> The two challenges, uh, if there's no stability in the region, we will never be able to succeed. Uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, stability in the country can only be had uh, through the creation of jobs, uh, through investments. These are two interconnected criteria. And we must find, therefore, a solution to the Libyan problem. Because you know, Libya was a, an important trade partner. And uh, we, the, if uh, uh, those young people aren't working, it is quite obvious that they're going to find jobs elsewhere. And uh, they, may, they may move away. So it is essential for us to uh, succeed on the economic front and to ensure security and stability. And uh, stability in Tunisia is going to affect stability and security in Europe because we see this uh, wave of migration. People are going through Tunisia. They're not all Tunisians, but they're coming through Tunisia to go to Europe. Even stability in Europe is being threatened. So it is up to you, up to us, together to find a solution to this uh, uh, flow of migration. With the support from the European Union in helping you manage this transition? Honestly, not quite. Yes, on the uh, media front, uh, there's a lot that is being said, but nothing is, uh, not enough is being done. We're still expecting a lot to be done. We haven't seen anything on the ground yet. It is uh, still uh, below our expectations, in particular uh, because of our very uh, close links with Europe and with the European Union. We were expecting uh, to find in Europe a real partner uh, in uh, and encouraging this new democracy in Tunisia. Two minutes left. So if I may, I'd like to focus on the theme of this meeting, the fourth industrial revolution. It's a revolution which brings opportunities as well as challenges. Do you fear the fourth industrial revolution for Tunisia or do you embrace it? That's a good question. <laughs> question uh, complex. I would say that what happened in Tunisia is a change. I uh, uh, don't want to talk about revolution because often uh, uh, it is said that revolution uh, means uh, the use of arms, of weapons. But this change could be encouraged by uh, the approval of the Tunisians of, uh, by a change of mentality and by believing that this small country has before it a, a wonderful future. And we are capable, and this is the theme of Davos this year, a fourth industrial, uh, a fourth uh, revolution, industrial revolution. We have an emancipated youth who are uh, uh, wanting to change, and they could succeed this transition, uh, not to say revolution. Well, we've reached the end of this session. Unfortunately, I could go on for hours talking. It's been fascinating. Thank you very much for oh, okay, thank joining you. us, Mr. Bechamui. Thank you also for joining us here in the audience, and thank you for watching us live online. This session is now over. <laughs>